When you're learning how to draw portraits, it's best to really use a method that will teach you how to eventually at least freehand and draw the portraits with good accuracy and proper proportions. Sometimes, however, we tend to have to cheat a little bit. Uh, by that I mean if you are using a paper that does not erase well, you don't want to have a lot of markings and sketchiness all over the page that is not removable when you finish the piece. So I want to show you today how to make your own transfer paper so that in the event that you have to cheat, you can transfer your image from your reference photo onto your paper and have a clean start to your drawing. I have used store-bought transfer paper in the past and ran into problems with my markings not being able to be removed afterwards. It was almost as though it was drawn in ink and it just ended up not working for me. So I wanted to show you today how to make your own transfer paper that you can control how dark your marks will be on your paper. Here I have the supplies that you will need in order to do this. It's a very simple process. Look for a good tracing paper. There are some out there that are less expensive, but they're very thin. And when you make your transfer paper, they will tear or the graphite will not adhere well to the paper and it doesn't work very well. So find a, a really nice tracing paper. This one by Canson has worked very well for me. Uh, just a suggestion on that. So when you start to make your transfer paper, you're going to take your piece and put it on a good, clean, smooth surface. Uh, and you're going to tape it down around the edges. Now, because I'm a little uh, crazy, I like to make sure that I've taped around all four edges completely to make it nice and clean because I'm just that kind of person. If you are not uh, worried about things not being perfect, <laughs> Congratulations, you're probably more sane than I am. But if you want it to end up being nice and neat and something that you can keep for many years, actually, then tape all the way around the edges and keep it nice and clean. I still have a piece of transfer paper that I made when I was in college, and I will not share with you how many years ago that was but it will last a, a very long time if you will take care of it and keep it like in a plastic sleeve or something to protect it when you're not using it. Once you have your tracing paper taped down, it's nice and smooth and flat. Find a good pencil. This is a 2B pencil. No, actually it's not. It's a 4B pencil. It's dark, but it's not horribly dark. I want something that when I trace the image, it's going to show up on my paper, but not be so dark that it can't be erased. So a 2B or a 4B pencil, either one seems to work very well to me. If you go much darker than that, you may run into problems. So what I like to do is start in the corner and you're going to fill the entire page with your graphite, and I mean the entire page. Don't let white spots in between show, no white streaks. Really good coverage. You want it to be solid black. And be sure to go all the way to your tape. You've seen those cooking shows where they're trying to teach you how to make a dish and they put it in the oven and they come back from a commercial and it's voila, completely cooked in the oven. Well, so here is my completely covered sheet of tracing paper with the graphite. So uh, I did it off camera so that you wouldn't have to sit there and watch me do it all. Now we're going to take 
just some plain rubbing alcohol and we're going to take a cotton ball and pour just a tiny bit of alcohol on the paper and take this cotton ball and just spread it around and it dries quickly so you want to move pretty fast What we're doing here is making sure that the graphite has covered every single little inch of the paper. And it, since it does dry fast, you may need to reapply a little bit more. And now I am sure that my paper is completely covered with the graphite. And if you let it dry, it only takes a moment or two. Then we will take the tape off and see what we have. Okay, I'm praying that I can do this without tearing the paper. And I'm going to very slowly peel this back. And get all four sides. And the last side. And there is your paper. Now I'm going to take a moment to reset my little table here and show you how to use this. So don't laugh at me, but I just tore this ad out of the newspaper to use as an example. Um, cute baby. So what I've done is I've taped the image down to my drawing paper so that it won't have a chance to move around at all. And then I'm going to take my transfer paper that I just made. I'm going to turn the back that we scribbled all over. We're gonna turn that down to face your drawing paper. And you can turn it however you want. You can move it as you need to. I'm going to go ahead and make mine go vertically and it will cover this whole image. Now, also, just to play it safe, I'm going to put a little piece of tape down here on the bottom of my image that I can lift up and take a peek underneath it as I need to. Now we can use really any kind of pencil or even a ballpoint pen, it doesn't matter. You can use anything to trace around your image and then we'll peel this back, remove our transfer paper and see what our image looks like. So I'm going to start with his head. Now I'm not pushing down very hard with this pencil and I really want to go and take a look at it and see what it's doing before I go too far with it. I don't want to do the whole thing and then find out it didn't transfer. Well, it's transferring just fine. I can see that line there. So I will continue and do a little bit more of this little guy. He's got a nice double chin. Cute little guy. So you can come in here if you want to and put in all of the detail. It's up to you how much you want to do. You can even mark where shadows fall on his face, lips. I mean, you can give yourself as much indication as you feel like you need or as little as you'd like either way.
Now here, because his hair is so fine and not very full, I'm going to just barely mark a hairline so I'll remember where it is. And you can come down here and go do the entire image if you'd like. I'm just going to fade this out because we don't need too much more information. This is just so that you can see how it's done. Okay, so let's take a look at it now and see. Peel back this tape so I can fold the newspaper image back. And there he is. So that's a simple way to be able to transfer your image over. Do not cheat unless you have to, um, because it's just so much more satisfying if you're freehanding or you use a method such as the proportional divider or the grid or whatever method that you like. I personally like to use the Andrew Loomis method when I draw. Um, but anyway, it's more satisfying when you can say you've done the whole thing yourself. But the main thing, I think, is what you end up with. If you end up with a drawing that you're proud of by doing shading and giving it lots of form and making it look realistic, if that's the style that you're after, then uh, whatever method you use to get there, it's always good to have some help to get there. And then as you can, you do more and more of it on your own and have uh, a great image to finish up with that you can say you drew and you've done yourself. But this is great, a great way of being able to transfer on pastel mat or some of the charcoal papers that have such a tooth to it that it's harder to erase the markings once you put them on there. So now you'll have this little piece of paper that you can save and use and reuse as much as you want. Also, if you've used it for years and years and it starts to get a little weak, all you have to do is add more graphite on the back, take your uh, Alcarub alcohol and go over it again and it just revives that paper completely. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and that it will be useful to you.